Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on anything and everything related to building and growing cleaning companies. If that is you and you are committed to growing your cleaning company, check out growmycleaningcompany.com and you can get everything you need to create the cleaning company you've always wanted. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or you've got feedback, questions, thoughts, any of that good stuff, you can reach out to us at 480-648-5149 to apply to be on the show or just give us a shout out. We are always excited to hear from you, Cleaning Nation. Today, we are chatting with Sarah Mitchell from Echo Mama Green Clean. Echo Mama serves the Scottsdale area with residential and commercial cleaning. If you want to reach out to Sarah and her team, you can hold them at www.ecomamagreenclean.com. Sarah, so glad to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So, first of all, I'm excited to get to talk to somebody in my hometown, the the lovely Phoenix slash Scottsdale, Arizona. Yes, it's lovely here. Well, if by lovely you mean hot as all get out, then yes, I would agree one thousand percent. Did you? Are you born and raised, or how'd you how'd you find your way here? Um, my mom moved here when I was young from Maryland. I was born and raised in Maryland, and I've kind of lived both places about half my life. Oh, beautiful! Uh, so, what what got you into the cleaning business? Well, I was working for a government contracted business in near D.C. when I was in Maryland. I had my first son, who is now seven, and at the time, I knew that I had to make some lifestyle changes, being away from him 11 hours a day to work in the corporate world and the commute, and I also was learning about eco-friendly products and how that impacts um, babies, and even when they're still in the womb, how would I touch impact their growth and their brain development, and so... The, the eco-friendly learning that I was doing and cleaning, I was into cleaning. I knew I had to make some kind of lifestyle change and create a lifestyle where I could be around and raise my son. And it kind of just formed an eco-mama. I was moving to Arizona, and as soon as I moved here six years ago, it just blossomed. Oh, well, congratulations. How are you doing now? Do you have a bunch of employees? Are you still doing the cleaning yourself? What stage of business are you at? I do have a I started off just cleaning myself few homes a day, just trying to spread the word here and there. I never envisioned it would be as big as it is now. And I have about 10 employees and I have um, somebody managing, helping me manage because I do have two small children now in addition to my seven-year-old. So um, I'm at home a lot with the children and I have somebody who basically runs my operation so that I am available for my children. Awesome. That is such a great place to be in life. And I would imagine Lots of cleaning nation out there is excited to uh, would love to be in that spot spot themselves. Any other thoughts or feedback before we we move on to the coaching portion? No, I think we're ready to jump into it. Cool, let's do it. How can I help you with your business today? The main struggles we are having now are motivating employees. We're not in a position where we can um, have benefits and four hundred one k and medical. So I'm looking at other options where I can motivate my employees to really take pride in what they do. Uh, That's been our biggest struggle right now. Keep them long-term, keep them happy. Um, Any thoughts or um, protocols that you may know of to just check in on employees and make sure they're happy and try to keep them longer term. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) For long-time listeners out there, they're like, any thoughts or protocols? This guy won't shut up. Yeah, absolutely. I've got some stuff. sister. I'm happy to share it with you in Cleaning Nation today. So first and foremost, it really starts before you hire. If you got a handful of people, whether it's working or not working or whatever it looks like, it's all, I don't want to say it's too late, but we're already halfway through the process. Where you want to start is your advertisement. Really, 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 actually before that even, 
What I found is trying to get employees motivated or excited or committed to something that you are excited about and they're not is a fool's errand. You can beat them, you can offer to pay them more, you can give them back rubs every two minutes. Uh, none of that really matters long term if you're just trying to get someone to do something they're not really interested in doing. So I found the foundational key to success is instead of finding people that don't want to clean or don't believe in what you want to believe in or aren't, don't have a work ethic or just don't uh, share your core values, your basic beliefs, and trying to get them to do that, it's so much easier to attract people that are already attracted to those core values and those beliefs and then encourage them to do something that they already want to do. do you, I, I know it seems uh, kind of like I'm splitting hairs. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So first and foremost, you've got to know your core values. You can't live them, share them, put them in advertisements, reinforce them in employees, and all the other good stuff you need to do with core values until you know what the heck they are. So step one is to really know what you believe and why that's important to you. Uh, without putting you on the spot too much, is that something you've, you've done any work with or have any thoughts on? Because that would help going forward in terms of how I can kind of give you some examples of what that might look like. Um, yeah, our core values um, at Eco Mama are mainly preaching about uh, the toxins in the environment and keeping our families, our employees, our customers safe from toxic chemicals that may be in our home and around their pets and children. That's the number one thing that we focus on. Okay. So that would be one. And generally one core value is more of a mission, but you want to have probably three or four. If you have 18, they're not really core values. They're just a bunch of junk that we believe. If it's just one, it usually doesn't encompass everything that you're looking at. So again, I've mentioned them on the show before, I can give you just to help is, for me it was have, is have fun, make money, help out, and be real. Those are kind of the four things. So for you, you'd wanna get them broken down into kind of a repeatable, scalable, communicatable. So like being green, not great, not really a core value because it's, A, it's just been done to death. Keeping families safe or healthy, well, that's a little different twist. And you might do that through green products or through what you do, but that would be a good core value. Serving the community would be one. Um, family time could be something. So what you really want to do is once you've got three or four of those, or basically, you know, you don't need a hundred of them, but enough you can kind of really communicate all of your core values in, you know, a dozen words or less. Uh, like, again, have fun, make money, help out, be real. Those are my eight. Then you're ready to to start trying to attract people that share those values. And the cool thing is once you attract people, so say for you, it was keeping family safe and protecting family time. And I'm, I'm kind of making it up because we haven't talked about it deeply. But if you had ads that said, hey, we're looking for people that you want to protect family time for yourself and for your customers, and you want to create clean environments that are healthy for infants, uh, you're probably going to attract people that are really into that. So when you... Instead of saying, hey, this, this customer is mad and you did a bad job and the person getting defensive, you can say, hey, we, I don't think we did a good job protecting this family or creating the environment that we talked about. And you're speaking to something they already believe in and encouraging them to follow the path that they kind of raised their hand and said they were interested in as opposed to trying to twist their arm and make them come, you know, move their beliefs and desires for themselves to fit your company. They already line up. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is really understand your core values. The second thing you're going to do is create an advertisement that attracts those kinds of people and repels the wrong kind of people, right? There might be people out there like, listen, I don't give two craps about chemicals. I just want to get a paycheck. I do a good job and I work hard, uh, but I, I, don't give, I don't care about that. You don't want that guy or gal on your team. Not that they're a wrong, bad employee. They're just not a good fit for you. Once you've now kind of got a a room full or a group of people that already believe and are passionate about the things that you believe in and are passionate about, now you can find creative ways to start lighting that fire. So I could, I'd like to give some specifics because I don't want to leave you out of hanging, but it's tough because they're all going to be core value specific. So I can tell you how I do things to get my staff on board with the core values that, I, that drew them to the company, but that's going to be different than what you're going to do because your core values are different. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, pick a couple core values that you think you've got and pick a circumstance where you feel that they weren't motivated or they didn't, they weren't on track. And we'll see if I can give you one or two real life examples before you hit the lightning round. Okay, well, um, we're well known for being the best in um, 
to our industry in the Valley for green cleaning. So one of our core values is to to be the best, to um, exceed expectations. And we have employees that will start off real motivated. They sound great, pass the background check, flying colors, and then after a few weeks, they just they're not excited. They're not. They don't take pride in what they do. And I really would like to have a staff that is excited at what they do and take pride in it. And um, you know, just don't do the the basics and try to be on with their way. Okay, so you started, gosh, I almost wish I could play it back for you. You started real corporate-y and boring and kind of answering a different question than I asked. And then you got real strong and jumped right in. So what, what the beginning was, you know, we're known for being really good and doing the best and being green. That's corporate speak that's not going to attract people. But then you moved to, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the words you said because they're powerful. You moved to people that were proud of their work. Say, say the second part again. That was a lot better. Okay, I really want um, to create a staff that takes pride in their work, has pride in what they do and um, why we're doing it and all that. Okay, so that so take pride in what you pride pride in work or pride in craftsmanship. That would be a potential mm -hmm. core value for you. Again, if you're hiring somebody that doesn't have that, trying to convince them to do it, I have no tools for you. That's 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 a bigger task than I'm up for or have ever been up for. Um, my coaching in that circumstance would be to free them up to pursue an opportunity that's going to fit their unique uh, abilities, right? Because not everyone has a pride in workmanship core value. Yeah. So if that's your core value. You're already attracting people that aren't going to put up with, uh, hey, you did a, sh uh, a shoddy work here. This is no good. They're going to be like, no, I didn't, you know, because that's, that's their core values as well. So once you've got that person, you can start, there's all sorts of fun stuff you can do to keep them motivated. First of all, what gets measured what it gets done, right? I wish I could say I was the first one to say that, but I wasn't. I think that's a Peter Drucker quote. But what, so first of all, start measuring in terms of uh, whether you do it internally and you go through and do a, a checklist to make sure everything gets done, whether you write down every employee or every customer feedback, good and bad, and kind of, again, if these people are already take pride in what they do, competition is going to take that pride to the next level. So what, at your monthly meetings, which you should be having, you report back. Maybe you have an award that, that, that rotates, kind of like the Stanley Cup or you know a sports award where the, the top employee that's had the best feedback or had the best work gets it, and the old employee can give it to the new employee. There could be a big ceremony. There could be gifts for every time there's positive feedback, or if you do a kind of a sneak attack inspection and somebody passes with flying colors. And then when they don't do well, instead of you saying, hey, you're doing crappy work, you're pissing off the customers, I'm angry with you, we're not happy, you're a bad employee, these are all things that are going to elicit a defensive response in them. You can say stuff like, gosh, you know, when you got, when you, what attracted us to you, I, from my understanding, is the fact that um, you were really proud in your work. Now, this doesn't show pride in work. We had these two or three problems. I know that's not you. What do we need to do to make sure we're all on the same page so you can live the core values that you said you wanted to be here for. You see how that conversation is really different than, hey, that's two strikes, three strikes, you're fired kind of a conversation. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So again, it really starts and ends with core values. Um, once you've got that, you, you've hired people that are believing in the same, you know, have the same passion that you have, it's a lot easier and more fun to be able to think of creative ways to encourage them and have those discussions when things aren't going the, the way they want. All right, any questions before we hit the lightning round? No, let's go. Let's do it, sister. Three quick questions. You're gonna give three amazing answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? The best piece of advice would be to keep going. Um, in this industry, I found that it could be very hard to decide if I should quit or keep going, pursue my dreams, or just give up, and just keep going has been awesome. Awesome That is, gosh, when I'm looking at coaching prospects or someone I want to help or work with, um, that stick to it of attitude of I'm not going to give up no matter what is probably my most prized commodity. So all that to say, I couldn't agree more, 1,000% uh, agree. All right, question number two. What's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that we can all learn from? Not trusting my instincts. If I feel a client is not right for us or an employee is not right for us, Sometimes I've overlooked that just because I want the job or I want the employee, and um, my instincts usually are, are right. So not trusting my instincts has got me in some situations where I could have avoided if I had trusted them. Well said. That's definitely a skill that uh, all entrepreneurs develop either the hard way or the easy way. 
listening to their gut and what they know is right. All right, last question. What's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice that will improve their lives or their business today? For me, I like to give back to the community whenever possible. In my specific industry, I like to give back to patients, um, chemo patients, people are going through hardships. Um, they're very sensitive to chemicals. So I find that the more we give back, the more comes in. The, the better karma we have, the better people look at us. So um, just give back whenever possible. It's kind of our motto, so what we go by. Now we're starting to now we're starting to get into some core values. Give back. I think that is that would be high in the rankings in terms of potential. Thank you for sharing that. All right, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your passion, your desire to grow. I appreciate you. Cleaning Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Sarah's show notes page and get everything you need to grow your cleaning company, you can do it all at growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions, your comments, and your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations, you are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.